Hello and welcome to In the Art Scene podcast, a show that unites creatives from all over the world in sharing inspiration, life stories, business knowledge, and love for art. This show is a part of the San Diego Art Directory, a nonprofit organization serving as an informational hub for all things arts and culture in San Diego County, founded by yours truly. I'm Galena Marcus, and I invite you to explore a new angle of the multifaceted world of arts and creativity. As always, the show notes will be on our website, in theartscene.com. And now, let's get to the episode. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to In the Art Scene podcast. And I am having a guest that you might remember from the last season, Kathy Carey, and her partner in crime, Judy. (laughs) So since uh, Kathy and I spoke last time, a lot has changed. So the last time, Kathy, you were a president and executive director of Surfing Madonna, and uh, we had a fascinating conversation about the history of Surfing Madonna and the programs. Since then, you moved to uh, be a program director at the local gallery, Front Porch Gallery in Carlsbad, San Diego. And you're, oh my God, like wherever you go, you are creating some amazing things. So first of all, please, both of you, again, introduce yourselves because uh, some people might not remember uh, you, Kathy, and uh, our listeners want to meet Judy as well. And then let's just jump right into it. Okay, so um, so I'm Kathy Carey, and uh, I am uh, an artist that lives in Carlsbad, California, and I um, am represented in galleries across the Southwest, Santa Fe, Taos, Scottsdale, and Tucson. And uh, my style is very colorful, um, representational, um, landscapes, animals, that sort of thing. And I have a strong sense of helping artists and promoting the arts. I believe everyone has creativity and I want to promote that. I think it enhances longevity, lifestyle, cognitive ability. So because of that, I was recruited by the Front Porch Gallery to become the director of programming, which I started last November. And um, we'll be talking more about this later, but we've had some really interesting changes to the gallery. So um, we also have with us Judy Barbarian. Hi, Judy. Hello, Galena. Yes, I am an artist as well. I come from a lineage of artists. My father is a painter, a very well-known oil painter, and my grandfather was also a painter, a poet. Uh, He worked as a set designer at, at a theater in Armenia. So wow. Yeah, I just grew up with nothing but art around me um, and my father's brothers as well, artists and painters. And yeah, this informed my life. I definitely yeah, well, you had no other choice. <laughs> <laughs> I felt that I had no other choice. It just seemed natural and I I saw what he was doing. It just just seemed so magical the way he spent his time you know uh, I would help him make canvases and then what you know transpired after a few hours of him in his studio was just mind-blowing so yes I, I I started painting but also my father's sister my aunt used to make me clothes Uh, great little outfits and dresses when I was a little girl and I was also fascinated by this and I also started making myself clothing and it just turned into this like do I go into painting do I become a fashion designer and a friend really just encouraged me to follow the path of fashion design which I took but I I took it with a very artistic uh, point of view always. And I got to make some incredible creations. I got to show at Paris Fashion Week when I moved to Paris and that was incredible experience. And I just- Oh my God, okay. I, 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 will, I will have you back over on the podcast to talk specifically about this. <laughs> yes, <laughs> sure. yes, yes. Yeah, so 
And my yeah, first well, education yeah. is in fashion design as well, by the way. So, yeah, I I got to have a lot of incredible experiences with fashion, and I just felt like I got to a point where, you know, I I felt like I had done everything that I could possibly do in fashion, and I really wanted to fulfill um, other artistic desires, and those were music and getting back to painting. So I started you know, uh, following that path and, and doors started opening up and well, here I am in, you know, Carlsbad at this gallery, getting to really just showcase everything that, you know, uh, I've been just working towards my entire life and, and, and I get to share it with others and, and that's all I've ever wanted to do. So this is, this is an incredible opportunity to be here. Uh, what yeah. Amazing. What What is your role with the front part of front porch? So community? I have the program manager here. Mm -hmm. Yes. And I am in charge of a lot of the marketing. And also I'm teaching a chair yoga class oh for folks who are, you know, older. Again, it's open to anyone, but it is focused for, for people who are older. I just got certified as a yoga instructor. And right before I got this job and it just worked perfectly hand in hand that I could offer this now like to the community and it's been growing every every week we get more and more people joining wow, yeah. wow. yoga yeah. yoga at the art gallery yoga at an art gallery oh I, my goodness yes inspiring wow yeah we we turn off all the lights and only the track lights on the artwork are on and it's just a really great environment no, no. wow yeah. that that, <laughs> sound, that sounds like a dream seriously okay well this is a perfect segue to our today's conversation i'm really glad that you ladies approached me uh to be back on the show and talk about what you were doing uh with the programming for the uh, front porch gallery uh and judy you just mentioned that um Yoga is, um, your yoga classes are mostly targeted uh, towards the older people. Kathy, right before we started recording, you also said uh, that you are really interested in working with this group of people. So now tell me more about what you ladies are doing. Okay, so um, so there's been studies that have been done. That participation in the arts through viewing, making, uh, discussing, collecting, all aspects of it, uh, enhances the quality of life for people. And so we have been trying to provide those opportunities for people here at the gallery. Um, we give people an opportunity to have self-expression at our making table. Um, there's social engagement as people are creating things in our paper craft cafe, which is a Wednesday program. All of our programming is free. Um, we have Eventbrite tickets just so that we know who's coming, but mm -hmm. everything is free. Um, and there's also personal growth that happens when you have these kind of social interactions while doing creativity. Um, your cognitive, um, you know, issues are strengthening. You've got new neural pathways forming. And it just makes life overall better for everyone, but especially in the over 60 um, demographic. Um, so for older adult participants, um, getting into these multidisciplinary arts, um, their physical, intellectual, emotional um, well-being is enhanced. It reduces isolation, which um, in Carlsbad, an age-related study was done asking people different questions about their life. And it was found that a, a high percentage of people um, are having loneliness issues. I think it was um, 30, almost 38% of residents felt left out, um, that there wasn't a place wow. where they could go and feel that kind of companionship. Um, and 35% of residents, um, felt like they weren't experiencing companionship regularly in their lives. So that's a pretty high number. Um, and so in our studies, um, it, what we're trying to do with the arts is there used to be this thing called third spaces. And, you know, for some people that might have been going to church or going bowling or going to a club, you know, and you would have this place where you would go. It wasn't home and it wasn't work. And it was this third space. And our society today has kind of lost all that. 
And especially since the pandemic, a lot of ways that people did used to engage socially kind of aren't happening anymore. So we're trying to recreate that, strengthen those bonds between people so that they can feel like, oh, I found my tribe, you know, the creative tribe, the group of people where you just walk in the door and you're close with everyone there because you you can start a conversation about anything. So we also have something on Meetup Group. Um, it's called Makers Meetup. And it's our only program that is specifically for adults over 60. And it's for all creative people, um, cooking, sewing, painting, sculpture, crafts, whatever it is you're doing that's creative. Um, you come and you bring a project you're working on or just something to talk about. And we go around the circle. We probably have about 20 people now in the group and everybody gets a, an amount of time to talk. And then there's a few questions from the group. But everybody just feels really connected by doing that. I, I participate in it. I know I do. So uh, it's a lot of fun. Well, that, that's amazing. Uh, so what prompted you to start focusing on on specifically uh, this, this category, this population category? Uh, because you just threw some uh, some fascinating numbers from the research, but... Uh, and and I agree with you. And speaking speaking about arts, you know, uh, really improving quality of life for everybody, right? Not just by looking at pretty things, but really creating a community. Um, but what prompts you to even start looking into this? Well, I I guess it's always kind of been in the back of my mind that as people get older, um, it's harder to make friendships. It's harder to make connections. Um, you kind of have the people that you've been around and you know people move away, things happen. So I, I think that's one thing of it. I myself, I'm getting older like everybody else. And I just started to notice that, that people's worlds were getting smaller. Um, and uh, But I have always had the idea that an art gallery or a place with culture and art and creative things, it should be multifaceted. You know, uh, discussing art is a really big deal. Because people walk into a gallery and they just walk around. They're in and out in five minutes. They don't really know what they're looking at. They don't really know what they're supposed to be thinking about. Like, So I give people prompts when they come in the gallery, like stand in front of, and I give them a little card, go find this piece in the gallery and stand in front of it and ask yourself, do you like it? Why do you like it? What is it about this picture that you like? You know, what are the colors like? What are they? Is that why you like it? So, you know, you start to have an inroads into what was the artist thinking about? I wonder why that was important to the artist. Is Does it matter if I know what the artist was thinking about or if I like it just because of I like it? You know, So having people start to really think more deeply about art is important to me as an artist because I think that's what art does for society is it's a self-reflective um, component. It's a mirror letting us know how we think, who we are, you know, who our other companions on the earth at the same time are. So that's been a big part of it for me. Yeah, that is so true. This is so true. Um, well, uh, I have a question for for uh, Judy. So you said that you are in charge of marketing. So you are uh, spreading the word about those programs. So as a marketing specialist, I'm really curious. How are you finding, how are you targeting the older adults to bring them into the gallery to engage in all of those programs? Good question. Yes, many different avenues. <laughs> we are on Facebook, Instagram. Our newsletter works really, really well. Uh, and when people come in, we let them know about our programming. They sign up. We have some very active members here who come in not members, but but the the ladies who come for our our classes, they want to spread the word. We make flyers. They share them with their friends. They're putting them up in you know, the libraries, and so we have just different, uh, you know, many many different avenues. Next door. I mean, we're really just any any way that we can spread the word. We're really, yeah, we're really trying to to find what what new ways. What you know, we're trying to partner with uh, the Carl. Well, we are partnering with the Carlsbad Library, and for these intergenerational 
um, events and you know and and discussions on on how we can bring you know the the young with with the older folks and and so there isn't that isolation and so you know all all of this is just really helping getting the word out and 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 just really yeah like making this a, a space for the entire community and not just not just for for people who are over 60 but they're the ones who feel excluded most of the time and so that's why the focus is on them and it's just been incredibly rewarding i mean because these are these are people who just kind of feel like oh you know what like i'm just not creative and if if they don't have someone encouraging them that then it's just not gonna it's it's a very self-conscious thing I've I've noticed this even with really talented artists walking in through the door they won't even admit they won't say oh I'm an artist and it takes a family member to say no you you have to look at their art and so I think that's it's really interesting we're really trying to you know break down those um you know like those walls that 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 we've been putting up around ourselves and say, no, like it, you know, creativity doesn't have to be, you know, painting a painting. It can be poetry. And that's something that we do here as well. We, we have poetry um, classes mixed with collage. So people come here and they get to look at any artwork that inspires them and write a poem from it. And then take it further and you know and and with the collage i think that that's a really just easy entry into art they can just by looking through images in a magazine that already starts to get the the imagination going the the mind you know activated to think that way so yeah um and and, and you know with the marketing as well it's it's just been also word of mouth which has just been great because the people who are coming are having a great time they say I'm gonna bring a friend and then they do and so you know it's just been so it's been really quite organic and and it's it's growing and we see yeah what we're you know we're building something really different than than what was here for for a while here at the gallery so yeah um we're bringing a lot of new energy, new ideas. Kathy and I could probably just, you know, <laughs> come up with so many fun things for the next five years, you know, and 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 we were this is I, I couldn't ask for a better person to work with. So that that is really, you know, that that's, I agree. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she is a wonderful person to work with. <laughs> yeah oh you both ladies are, are really amazing uh so just to clarify this is you know open for anyone in san diego county right i mean it's like, yes or yeah. i don't know visitors of san diego mm -hmm. it's not just, okay. you know yeah and you know we've kind of been focusing on the over 60 demographic but mm -hmm. um just to kind of break into that a little bit one of the things in the study that was done in carlsbad that um seniors were saying that they felt left out of is interacting with school age kids. And so we thought, oh, okay, so how do we make that happen? Well, that right was my I'm next thinking, question. Yeah. How well, do we make thinking, that yeah. <laughs> I get Keep a phone call right into it. from the high tech high school uh -huh. and they say, hey, in our junior year, we send the kids out to work with uh, a, in a in a workplace. Um, and you were picked by a couple students. So we currently have two junior high school kids. Um, who are interning here and they are both creating a painting and they're being mentored by me um, in painting and they're going to be mentored by Judy, which she can tell you about the fashion show they're going to do. Um, and they will be in a show here at the gallery called mm. Mentors. And so all the people in the Mentors show will be partnered with another artist that's 20 years difference in age. And they will both share something with each other. So it's not a one-way street. Everybody has something to share. And um, so that's an exciting show. But while the um, the interns are here, they are interacting with our other people who are over 60 and they, they're really enjoying the interactions. I think um, Felix and Rizel are enjoying it. So it's a, it's an actually it's working. <laughs> it's working yeah. really nice. 
Yeah, you know, while we're talking, it actually um, reminds me of another interview I've done a, a while back, probably a year or so, with uh, an artist and a scientist, the gerontologist from the Miami University of Ohio. They have a program, it's called Opening Minds Through Art. Uh, they are working specifically, it's an intergenerational creativity program. And I will make sure to include the link in the show notes and I will share with you directly as well. Um, uh, this is specifically for the uh, older adults with a cognitive decline. But what they're doing is they are uh, inviting college students, sometimes high, high school students, uh, and they pair them with an elderly for a semester. So they have a partner for like a longevity of the whole semester. And they're kind of helping those elderly go through those creative programs led by uh, an artist. So the prompted by an artist, everything is provided. And so by the end of the semester, they form a really, really deep uh, connection and friendships uh, together. And it, it does help the elderly with the cognitive decline because, first of all, they have a companion. Uh, the creative activity is helping their uh, cognitive abilities and just having a good time. But it also creates awareness in younger people that, you know, that gap between the generations is kind of artificial because mm -hmm. the, there is this, um, uh, I don't know, a notion that, you know, young people need to be hanging out with young people because it is not fun to hang out with older people. Uh, and, it, and if you're looking at the uh, nuclear families right now, right, we don't leave like three generations in one house anymore, right? So we're seeing what grandma's for... Hanukkah, Christmas, whatever, <laughs> Thanksgiving, and that's about it, right? If that. Uh, so that is a very, I think that this is a, this is an amazing thing and a, and a very important thing that you're doing for, for the whole community, uh, not only for, for the elderly people, but, but for the young people as well, because it is, I think it is important that they grow up with uh, the respect and love and understanding uh because this is their future as well right yeah seeing somebody successfully aging is very powerful yeah because if if you're 15 or 16 years old you're gonna think somebody that's 60 is like oh my gosh you know like everybody that has gray hair is you know one foot on a banana you know and about to fall down the stairs but you know that's just not the way it is particularly here in carlsbad there are very active people you know, yeah. and uh, it's very interesting to open open people's minds about that. Yeah, well, Some people uh, are just hitting their stride as an artist at sixty. Really? Well, that's interesting. I, 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 that's that's going to be my follow up question, <laughs> but I just wanted to make a comment that I actually pers personally have a very good friend, one of my uh, most favorite people on earth. Uh, she is ninety seven. She just turned ninety seven. She's a working artist. She is an amazing, amazing person. I interviewed her twice on the podcast, and, and uh, right now I'm helping her to get the book out. And I actually I reached out to you, Kathy, if you remember, Be Gold. Yeah. So, but she's yeah, she's amazing. Uh, uh, and I I don't. Uh, first of all, I want to be like her when I grow up. <laughs> right <laughs> yeah i consider her my art grandma uh but this is, this is just amazing how much we can share having you know more than 50 years difference between us maybe you guys should consider being mentors in this next show i would love to yeah would okay. love to I'll yes him. i'll send you yeah i'm, I'm kind of just putting the feelers out so if okay. anybody that's hearing this the show is gonna start in um it's going it, it's going to open in August, so okay. I don't know when this airs, but uh, well, before August for sure. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, I'm trying to find people to participate and certainly come see the show because the mentors are going to present to the audience at the reception what they learned from each other. So the end result is probably going to be an artwork or a product, but not necessarily. They might make a PowerPoint. They may do something completely, no restrictions. Do you have a limitation how many people uh, you want to include in the show? Well, I wanted to start with at least 10 pairs, uh -huh. um, but we can go beyond that. Um, I thought if it's fewer people, then maybe each person in the pair could have several pieces. But if I give a good response and we have, 
you know, 20 pairs, I can definitely have 40 pieces of art. I can have probably up to 60. Well, let's make, of... let's make that happen. Yeah. I let's think, make I that think happen. it's a really neat idea and I'm looking forward to seeing what happens. Okay. So everybody who's listening to this, uh, uh, grab your grandma uh -huh. <laughs> and do art with her. <laughs> so or, we'll... you know, they may know somebody that's 20 years younger too. Yeah. Yeah. You know, for a 15 year old, that's a 35 year old. So by the time this is on air, uh, there will be a link to for the to the application, right? To the call for artists specifically for this show. Uh, the requirement is to have a pair of people who are at least twenty years difference in age, uh, working on some creative project together, learning from each other, but each of them can make their own pieces of art. Yes. And they will have to present. Yeah, just like a little five minute thing. Okay. Awesome. Well, that fun. it will be it sounds like fun. It sounds really like fun. Yeah, let's talk about the uh the next exhibit that you're planning. Okay. So um one of the things that's changed a little bit in the gallery at Front Porch is um we're curating shows a little differently. It's not just an open call. Um, we're kind of thinking about what do we want to show? How, who do we want to invite in? What message do we want to share with the world? How do we want to educate you know, people through art? Um, so the next one is called Finding Your Senses, Adaptation, Ability. And it's kind of a, a, a show about people who are living with disabilities, perhaps. Um, they've had a trauma. Um, or something to one of their senses, maybe a vision impairment, um, maybe a brain injury, something like that. It's also for people who are working with a particular sense as their art project. So people who are making instruments, musical instruments, um, people who are making guitars or painting guitars out of unusual materials. Um, the focus of the artwork um, might be a little performance piece of different sounds. So we're enhance, enhancing vision, sound. We're going to have um, curated um, engagements with other senses, scent, taste. Ah. Um, we're going to have programming where people are going to work with uh, listening to music and drawing what that music looks like. Oh, that's amazing. I love that. One of the participants in the show is uh, has synesthesia. Which means that you experience. She hears the sounds. Yeah, color yeah. as a feeling. She, or yeah, she hears the he, color. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I, I've heard, I've heard about that, and uh, it, it, it is fascinating. It's absolutely yes. fascinating. But I think we all have a little bit of that. So, for instance, we're going to have some sense that people are going to be able to, you know, you know, close their eyes and smell it, and then choose a color that represents that scent, um, motion that represents lines. What other kinds of things we're going to be doing? Taste. Taste. Mm -hmm. yes. And then we're going to have... Yeah, I think you're right that we we probably all have a little bit of that. Like, I always I always thought that uh, number four is green. <laughs> hey, <that's laughs> I don't perfect. know. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and that's very meaningful yeah. to you. Yeah. If you ever see a number four in green, you're like, yeah, that's yeah. it. Interesting. So, yeah, so we're inviting people to come in and enjoy this show as a way of understanding how people with impaired sense um work in the work in the world how do they deal with the world having an impaired sense um because that's how we experience the world so if your vision is changed and as we age our senses all change so it's really interesting to think of it that way that that's how we're experiencing the world differently yeah that that's amazing so i uh have a question i haven't visited the front porch gallery yet it's on my list but okay. based on what you're uh, describing with this exhibition uh i imagine that it, it must be a, a really big space because to include all of those senses in the different stations where people can come and experience like the taste and the smell and also do an activity like painting to music uh how big is the gallery it's actually not that big, but we do have a lot of space in it, and we have a very large courtyard outside area that we also 
use. And so it feels bigger and there's lots of great windows and light. So yeah, it, yeah. Yeah, July 20th, if this airs before that, will be a big event here. We're gonna have a band with a lot of interactive participation. We're gonna have shakers, bucket drums, zills, chimes, all kinds of things to interact with the band and the music. Yeah. So that'll be a fun day. Right. If it's um, good, I think it, it's it, about a thousand square feet here. Nice. Well, that's, it's, it's, yeah, that sounds right. Maybe a little. Yeah. Bit. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. a that's a nice size. Yeah. 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 Well, if the next uh, exhibit has a a ninety inch square lit up dome that's going to oh. be an escape dome where you can oh. get inside this thing and experience lights and textures and music. Oh wow! Full sensory. <laughs> Okay, so if, the if, it, artist. If, if it's a, if it's a kids friendly event, I'm bringing my two year old. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh yes, all ages. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, so that, I love talking is... about the artist that's making the escape dome because she's uh -huh. such a celebrity in my opinion. Her name is Janet Hansen, and she is in the Grammy Museum because she created the Daft Punk robots, and oh. she is an engineer and she works with lighting. And she also does welding and uh, she, I guess she sews, she does um, fashion and she does um, outfits for performers that light up. And so she does artwork and costumes and, and she's just really an incredible artist in this new uh, medium, you know, light and and touch. It's very tactile. So. Wow. Wow. That sounds amazing. So uh, when is the show going to run? So it opens June 5th. Mm -hmm. The first reception is June 8th from 12 to 2. And then we have a second reception on July 20th. Um, mm -hmm. And that one's going to be from 2 to 4. And um, we have poetry readings at both uh, the receptions. And what else? We're going to also have the music, the DJ, um, eclectic playlist to, to the painting. Okay, that, yeah, that's true. That won't yeah. probably be at the show, the receptions. That'll no, be a separate, a separate free programming. Um, so check on our website for the free programming coming up. Oh, we'll have the making table. So we have a table where people can do collage and create things. We'll put that out in the courtyard. So while the band is going on and people are dancing and stuff, um, unless it gets too crowded out there, we may keep it inside. Yeah. But we have we just want everything you know, going on. Amazing. An exciting wow. envi environment. Absolutely amazing. And uh, I actually saw that you guys posted it on San Diego Art Directory already. Well, so. Yes, we did. <laughs> yes, you did. So uh, if you guys are listening out there, if you are in San Diego area or planning to visit, uh, please sign up for the email updates on sandiegoartdirectory.com. So you will not miss amazing uh, shows and reception events like this one. So thank you so much for, for jumping on the platform. I actually wanted to rewind a little bit back and uh, ask Judy about uh, your interns because you guys mentioned that you are having uh, like a fashion show with them. And, and uh, I imagine you were specifically working with them on that. Yes. So the fashion show won't be until September. My idea was to have it during fall fashion week. Mm -hmm. Right. And you know, Carlsbad is probably not the most fashion forward place, but that doesn't mean that we can't bring it here. And there is this movement that that this guy, Ari Seth Cohen, I believe his name, and 10 years ago started photographing these incredible women in New York City and they older women who mm -hmm. were just dressed so just elegant and uh i mean really i guess over the top but just i mean these ladies if you saw them wouldn't make I, your day I did. right i did you know? yeah and i know what you're iris talking apple. about it's fascinating yes. yeah yeah iris apple was was one of the was one of the the main ladies who really actually broke through made it big made it into you know Fashion grandma the, i know yes yes yeah. yes you know, she had, you know, luxury fashion brands wanting her to model, you know, their product. And, and so all of a sudden, it you know, there was this 
you know, a movement for, you know, these, these older women to, to be, uh, yeah, just, just represented and, and, and now made, you know, to be beautiful and, and they are beautiful. And so to me, yeah, I've, I've always, I've always loved fashion. I always loved what fashion can do for someone. I, I, when I lived in Paris, I, I saw how everyone, I mean, everyone there just really pays so much attention to, you know, just down to like their shoes to, you know, the hair, the, and, and it's every, every day, this is just a, a way of life for them. And, and it just, it just felt like they, you know, they were just so proud and, and it really was beautiful. I, I just, you know, wish that I could bring that everywhere. And, and I mean, I dress up, I love to dress up. I, I actually started a, a clothing label when I started my, you know, my, my fashion career called Please Dress Up. So I thought that mm-hmm. that was very appropriate. I did want everybody to dress up so they could just feel more empowered, more, you know, just have more fun. You really, I mean, when you walk out in a, you know, red dress or Mm -hmm. a black dress or a bright yellow dress, like all of this actually affects us. I mean, it's, you know, we're going back to color, you know, and it's, it's, it's very artistic the way one can carry themselves. And so, yeah, I wanted to start that here in Carlsbad and it's called advanced style. So Mm -hmm. that's what the, the, yeah, the photographs and the blog and, and there was a documentary made about it. And, and this advanced style, just, it really, it really took on like a whole, you know, like huge movement. And, and so I I wanted to bring that here. We have this amazing woman that comes in with this, like, just adorable, like short bob. And it's this like light purple. I've never even seen anything quite like it before. And in the last show that just came down, we had this woman, uh, Catherine Peterson, and making some just gorgeous recycled dresses that were all wearable. Mm. And, you know, this this really just inspired me to to say, yes, like this is we need more of this. Like there is an interest, I think you know, that, that if we got, um, you know, the community involved that, that we could really, you know, hopefully maybe make this like, a twice a year thing, you know, fall fashion week and, and, and spring fashion week. And we wouldn't do it for a whole week. We would just do it for a night. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I think, I think I want to just, you know, bring that into it as well, because some people say, oh, I'm, I'm not, you know, I, I'm not creative and I'll, and I'll look at the way that they're, that they're dressed. And I'm like, yeah, like you are actually like you, you took the time to pick out, you know, those earrings with that great little sweater with that, you know, and, and all of this is, you know, is, is creativity. And so it's just opening people's eyes to it. So, yeah. yeah and, and I, yeah. I, I think I can relate to what you're saying uh, because I grew up uh, in Moscow, which is a huge cosmopolitan city. Oh, yeah where it, it's custom to put the high heels and the full makeup if you go grocery shopping. Yep. So, yeah. And yeah. Uh, when I first moved to San Diego, if I were wearing something that was considered casual in Moscow, I always felt overdressed. Yeah. So, so uh, my casual uh, right now, if I go like this to Moscow, people will probably think that I'm in a big trouble. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I yeah, I do know what you I, I don't know exactly what you mean that, you know, it, it affects how we feel, how we present ourselves if we just choose something different in our clothes, because we get comfortable with uh, with something and then we kind of disappear in and, uh, you know, this kind of comfy, casual, not looking like anything, not making any yeah. statement and just just choosing, you know, bolder earrings already feels like making a statement. Hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. And so, so I have the interns helping me, you know, come up with, um, you know, I have them researching what is advanced style. I had asked them if they'd ever even heard of it, and they hadn't. And so, 
yeah, they're they're researching that. We're you know we're making flyers to, you know, to put out to see you know what kind of interest there is, you know, to see how big of an event we want this to be. So yeah, it's it's been great having them, uh, you know, be part of this as well, and and hopefully you know they get inspired too because yeah, this so is, yeah, this is more of a casual um, generation coming up and yeah. Do you have an idea how many pieces you want to have in that show? You know, I I want it, it'll depend on how many people want to participate. You know, if if 20, if 25, if it's just 10, you know, it'll it'll be those um those women wearing wearing what they feel good in and that's what it is. It's, you know, them creating something or wearing something that makes them feel good and and it doesn't necessarily mean that like they have to make it i really just want it to be like a celebration of you know dressing up of, of feeling good of feeling yeah it's it's nice to it's nice to feel to feel feminine and 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 just you know to i mean i'm wearing sequins right now i you know and and you can't see but very flashy gold sneakers like and I this has just always been me and I'm like I'm sure other people would feel fun wearing this as well and 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 I and I know that, that that's true but it's almost like they need a reason to right we always need a reason to it's like oh well where am I going that's like it's really right. like you know that's right yeah and, not... and yeah and and for some people it might even feel like uh you know getting out of their comfort zone which is exactly. also not a bad idea right <laughs> it's always a great idea it's yep. always always a great idea this is actually how i found myself really i was a very very terribly shy child my entire life and i just wanted to you know at one point my my aunt finally just stopped making me these dresses but what i always wanted to wear were these very like fancy extravagant you know tool princess dresses that my aunt would not make me those dresses and my parents were not going to buy me those dresses and I just was longing I mean just longing and finally it just happened that in eighth grade I met a friend who showed me her mom's you know clothes from the 60s and she had this long bright floral just you know psychedelic dress that was a showstopper I mean the colors were so bright and I asked her I said do you think your mom would let me borrow that dress I want to wear it on the last day of eighth grade and it was kind of like my like just I don't know rite of passage just like the before and after Judy and I wore that dress and felt like I was a superhero like nothing could touch me and from that moment on high school was I mean a blast because I just all of a sudden thought you know what like I get to decide what I wear and people would look at me and like what like you know and I was like I, I realized there's no rules like you know and and I thought I might not even be able to dress like this afterwards. I don't know what's going to happen, you know, if I'm going to dress like this in college or what kind of job I'm going to get. But in high school, I mean, you know, I can still go to school and, you know, in a 1950s prom dress and still pay attention and still, you know, get like a 4.0, which is what I did. And so it didn't matter, but at least I could just have fun doing it. And yeah, so it's been it's been a big part of my life and I've wanted yeah. to share it with as many people as possible and that's an advantage to be an artist right you you just wear whatever right. heck you want and no right. one can like can yeah you don't have an office with a dress code or anything and exactly and people yeah. will will know exactly who you are and what you do <laughs> yes yes uh, yeah, yeah. Cool. so it's are you going to have an open call for models so the the models will be the people who want to be in the show like the um I'd love to have the the woman who made the dresses um you know model one of her own dresses if she wants if not then maybe she would she also said her daughter does a lot of the modeling and so that would be great maybe we could have an intergenerational moment there and you know I'd love to have 
Bonnie, who has this a just great purple hair that I, I really, really want her hairdo. You're a real fan. <laughs> yeah, I'm a big fan. She's just, she's just her personality and everything and with the hair. I'm like, where did you come from? You are amazing. And you know, if she was making these, well, she showed us she she was making these gorgeous collaged scarves. And so I was like, wow, this is very fashionable and artistic. And so she had like photographs on the scarves with wow. uh, trim and buttons and and all and lace. And, and so, yeah, I, I thought, wow, you know, even if she just wanted to model the scarf or just, yeah. So it's, Amazing. it's not going to be your, you know, I think conventional fashion show. Again, this is Carl's bed. We're not in New York. We're not in Paris. It's it's that's not. I'm just wanting to, uh, to yeah, just to to make a fun um, fun event and and also just educate people on on the the power of dress of dressing up. Yeah. Well, it's not New York or Paris, but you never know what you're starting. Yeah, it's good true. things tend to grow. Yes. <laughs> Organic, yeah, just like you said. <laughs> yes, I I agree. I is it, agree. Is it for women only? That's a good question. I would love to open it up to men. I yeah. I mean, I don't think we are we are not exclusive in that way. If yeah. anybody wants to, all all people, all ages. I thought I, Jay Shree made a beautiful costume for her dog that was in her daughter's wedding. Oh, oh wow. I just love that. Oh, let's bring the dogs. I mean, that would just be it's crazy. fashion. Yeah, fashion is for everyone. Exactly. Exactly. So yeah, we really do want to get more men in through these doors and yeah, also break down that kind of stereotype. I think that there is of, you know, not a, like my boyfriend got to come here and collage and he had never done that before. And like, wow, this was the most like relaxing and creative thing I've done in a while. <laughs> I, like, I should bring my husband. Yes, you should. I absolutely should. Yeah. Yes. And my two-year-old. Yeah. Oh, family. Everybody can go <laughs> yes. on. Yes. That's that's true. That's true. He just learned how to use the glue stick. So yeah. My oh. husband. Oh. oh okay. <laughs> I'm just joking. Okay. He's on his way. <laughs> Love it. Okay. Oh, ladies, this is amazing. Well, thank you so much. First of all, thank you so much for doing so much for the community. This is absolutely uh um this is the quintessential cultural uh, phenomenon it's not just the visual arts it's not just uh you know conventional gallery it's it's whatever you feel like feeds your soul we're going to create it and invite the community to participate and I applaud you for that. This is absolutely amazing. And I want you to keep doing this and uh, as many people as possible to hear this episode and come to San Diego. There's 35 million people visiting San Diego every year. Are they going yeah. to the beach and uh, what, Comic-Con? Come on, people. There are so yeah. many cool things happening over here, right? So, uh, yeah. No, I was just going to say, we really are a very unique phenomenon. I mean, yeah. things like this don't happen very often. Um, so we're a nonprofit. So we're funded by a foundation. Um, and for the foundation to have that foresight and, you know, integrity to do something like this for the community is amazing. I mean, galleries yeah. are usually like, ah, oh, we've got a bottom line here. We've you know got to sell. Um, and then, you know, Judy and I are really unique individuals. And for us to both be here doing what we do, that's really unusual. You know, we just really kind of there's just like been this kismet that came together like boom. And it's uh, it's really working. It's neat. So I hope people come and enjoy be part of it. You are creating some uh, absolutely uh, amazing energy that I, I can tell even through the screen. <laughs> yes, you two are really like sparking against each other. It's it's it's, it's really cool. And may I just say that you landed uh, absolutely a dream job. <laughs> <laughs> I did that way. Yeah. 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 Doing something amazing for community while actually doing whatever the heck you want as artists. That's like this is dream job. Come on. This is amazing. 
All righty. Agreed. So Agreed. we will have uh, everything we were talking about down in the show notes. Um, I think this episode will air uh, past the beginning of the sensory show, but before it ends and definitely before the July 20th event. So hopefully we will have more people um, out there uh, after listening to this episode. Uh, and obviously we will be announcing it sooner earlier through san diego our directory uh which is thank you for participating in this project that's that's my own way of doing what you do for the community <laughs> that's good that's a great way to name it's great to have it there yes yeah so uh we will have links and references to everything we mentioned including the advanced fashion um uh, maybe you can share some research with us as well because i think this is this is fascinating and also i'll i'll throw a link to the uh episode about opening minds through art in ohio uh so you guys can uh have a little bit of a uh, background and see that there are more people around the country doing similar stuff, intergenerational cultural um, engagement. So thank mm -hmm. you so much. Uh, I, it was a pleasure having you. Absolutely. And uh, I don't know what's going to be uh, happening next time I have you both on the show. Uh -huh. You're going to be moving on to some other um, amazing projects with another organization or within this organization. I don't know, but I know that it's going to be another fantastic interview. Thank you so much. And Thank you. you really it was really fun having uh, some time to talk with you. Thanks. Yeah, Thanks. absolutely. You. Thank well, you. We'll see you again in the art scene. Thanks for listening to this episode of In the Art Scene. Show us some love by sharing it with your friends and giving it a raving five-star review wherever you listen to your podcasts. By doing this, you're supporting my nonprofit organization called San Diego Art Directory on its mission to make San Diego a new cultural destination. To learn more, visit sandiegoartdirectory.com and intheartscene.com and follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Have an inspiring day. I will see you next time in the art scene.